at the end of high school, and we actually slept there. We did HSE, which is the equivalent of BC, but in order to achieve that, there was no time to go home. So we would leave, I, I could have walked home from school, probably it would have taken me 45 minutes. But we had a dormitory, we went to school, and we started the day at 10 20 with Daphne, and we finished nights at 9 30 at night. We had general studies in the afternoon, between the hours of about 2 and 7, the full, full range of general studies, and that's, that was my secondary schooling. After high school, I went off to different Chabad yeshivas around the world. I spent three years in the yeshiva in Manchester, um, which is a great place to learn, and there's not much else to do. And in, in Yeshiva Solitaire in New York, I spent my final two years there, um, uh, learning under the tutelage of some of the masters that were in the, um, the Magi Yeshiva. From there, I was sent on Schlitos, and I did a two year Schlitos and Smitha, the government of ordination. Um, Hashem knew that I'm the kind of person that has to know what's happening next. So I finished my final smith of her hair and my final smith of test at about 1 o'clock, just around lunchtime. I finished my final smith of test. At 4 o'clock, I went on my first shit of bed. Um, so Hashem didn't let me breathe in between. Two weeks later, I was engaged and instead of 70 for that period. And then often, while I was in my engagement period, I intended, fully intended, to go to Kodal. I actually enrolled in the Kodal here in Melbourne. Um, but if things didn't quite work out that way, never ended up coming to Melbourne for Kodal. And I actually got a couple of wonderful job offers. I was sent by the Ryan College to study in Israel in an individualized program. It was just, I was actually the only student in the program. My wife had along as well, though she's not in Kodal. I studied 12 units of study. Did a lot of the psycho child psychology, the psychology of curriculum development, informal, formal education, educational leadership, and a huge range of courses. I learned from the masters um, in Israel. I traveled actually across two different campuses one that's in Ramat Ilan, a uh, little bit closer to Tel Aviv, and one in Yerushalayim. And I learned there for two semesters, doing 12 courses. After that, I came back to Mariah College, and I'll talk about my uh, educational experience, teaching experience soon. And I did a graduate diploma in education. I majored, my, my, my major is education, my minor is in educational psychology, uh, sorry, my apologies, in psychology and counseling. And I also did special ed, and I did extremely well in special education. I then took my master's in education, which focused on educational leadership, total quality management, um, teaching philosophy, philosophy and education in numerous other areas. After more than 10 years of planning, um, my wife and I were finally able to go and do our year in Kodal, which we were never able to do beforehand. So just over about 14 months ago, I returned from a year in Eretz Yisrael, in Israel, where I took my family, my children went to Israeli schools, and my wife just spent her time learning, and I learned five and a half days a week, half a day on Friday, in Kodal. And it, for me, it was like Ghanaian on this world. It was just really something to re-energize the batteries. And that was really quite something. My experience in education, I spent one year while I was finishing off my Schlitz and my uh, Smith on teaching in Yeshiva College in the Chabad School then in Sydney. I spent six years teaching in Mariah College Primary School. It was a primary school of about 480 at the time, and I eventually became the deputy head of Jewish Studies. After that, we established myself the head of the Jewish Studies in the middle school, there was a head of general studies in the middle school. We established the middle school. It was between about 410 and 430 students over the five years that I was heading up the middle school, and it was a tremendous challenge to create a school. We had to physically uh, change the environment, and we had to also, in terms of human resource and training of teachers, and it was a new way of thinking. And it was a big challenge to really into it, and I became part of the leadership team in the entire college. There's about six or eight people that led the school. While I was doing the primary and the secondary school in, in Mariah College, and sorry, middle school in Mariah College, I was also working for Rabbi Grari and the, the BINA, which is a Jewish outreach organization and um, educational organization. I gave a huge range of year, particularly to youth, ran a lot of youth programs, and also shared tablets. About um, maybe 12 years ago, an ad went out in the Jewish news uh, that we're going to start a modest year in somebody's house. Ten years later, 18 people, without being married on a Wednesday night, with the Gemara Shir, have went through three 
concept is a Gumara from beginner level through to intermediate where they're learning Gumara, Ajitesis, and Rishen. So for almost 10 years I was giving a shear to these adults in Gumara and numerous other programs. Just before I came to Melbourne, for most of the year prior to actually coming to Melbourne, there's a, a need amongst the young Chabad community, and just generally the young community, not just the Chabad community, to establish a shul for young families. So about 25 young families got together, and in different people's dining rooms, they established a shul, and I was their rabbi on Shpia per se. And that is my experience of education and training, and my experience of education and learning. Now, I want to talk about where we're headed, and it's important that we take a few steps back in order for us to look at the big picture, in order for us to understand our vision. So we have to remember that our underlying purpose is very simple. It is student learning and student development, the holistic development of the child. Anything that we do, the question that we ask ourselves is, Will this enhance the teaching and learning? Will this enhance the well-being and the development of the child? And that is a very important question. This actually is the underlying purpose, and this lends the base for our entire mission. As well, we have to ask ourselves, who are we? What do we stand for? What is our ethos here at Yeshiva College? And to put it succinctly in a sentence, we are a Chabad community school. We offer the full range, the full gamut of general studies and Jewish studies. And as we progress through high school, when the studies becomes a bit more intense, we offer different pathways to suit the different needs within the community and the different families' desires and to suit the different students. And that's what we stand for, and that's what we're actually dedicated to. This year at Bach, we had a graduation ceremony that I'll refer to a bit later in the SIFTA. We had eight students graduate with tremendous accomplishments. And this year, we're going to have 23 students, with a few students choosing alternate pathways. In addition to that, 23 students graduate BC. One of the things that we have to establish in our vision is that we are a proactive school, a school that is placing ourselves to meet the future, not being dragged along behind it. We're surveying the needs, the immediate, the short term, and long term of our community, looking at how we can actually grow and develop the dreams in the school. And it's amazing because our school has a culture of change. Most schools, and I've studied schooling systems around the world and visited about 35 different schools in many different parts of the world, most schools are very resistant to change, particularly schools that have been around for a long time. Our school is quite the opposite. We're right, we're ready for change and progression. In fact, I had, I had my welfare team that I'll refer to a bit later, my secondary school welfare team sitting in my office and just after we had discussed the new structures that I'm going to present to you tonight, and they were itching for change. Come on, when's it happening? Or? And it's quite amazing that we have that change culture within our school. The three underlying parts of our vision are creating an inspirational faculty, offering holistic health, and we're going to develop each of these in detail, and partnering with our parents and the community. So the staff, student, and parent. And that's a very, very important ingredient in our mission. Now, not to talk just about vision and theory, but actually how do we actually achieve our vision. I'm going to talk first about the staff. Today, this evening, I'm going to show you our leadership structure that we have implemented already. And this leadership structure ensures that there is an overlap. This leadership structure ensures that each person plays to each other's strengths, that we synergize, that we collaboratively make decisions, that we build very strong teams, and that we are there for our teachers so that we're able to cultivate and able to choose um, effective, highly talented staff so that we're able to, to, that we're able to deliver the quality of teaching them. And as well, we're going to have targeted professional development, both for all the leadership team, which we've already commenced, and for our, all the teaching staff, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. Our students. In the buzzword in education today is academic excellence. I've spoken about this numerous times, so I believe that it's a slight misnomer. It's really individual excellence. Not every child will have a stellar academic you know, career. Not every child is, is uh, their natural inclination is not always in that direction. 
but we can develop each individual to achieve excellence. This is accomplished by an effective differentiation, both ends of the skin, and we are committed, and I'll mention it again later tonight, to offer both extension, like gifted and talented, or honors programs in the Jewish studies area, both in the secondary and primary school, and effective special education support and educational services, and I'm going to refer to that again. The thrust of the new models that I'm going to present tonight as well are focused on student well-being, student development, not just discipline, reacting to things, giving out consequences, but actually developing the well-being, the social, the emotional well-being of our students. And we're also working on the positive behavior policies, which we've already implemented in the primary school and we're working on the secondary school, where we respect and value time and all learning and knowledge. And the third part of our vision, the parents, the community. We've upgraded already quite a bit of our communication structures. Many of you may have seen, and this is becoming a very important vehicle of communication, our newsletter. About the middle of last term, together with uh, Rachel Mahalovich and our, our PR department, we rolled out a new format of our newsletter. And the newsletter is becoming a more vital vehicle of transfer of information. And it's very, very important that each person, even if they don't necessarily get it by their children bringing it home, at least access it via the internet, whether you're going to print it off or not, it's very, very important to go through it. We're personalizing articles each week from our leadership team. There's a lot of crucial information there. You can also see the accomplishments that go on in the school and your children showcase throughout the entire newsletter. Very, very important part of the communication. Parent information evenings, orientation evenings, parent teacher evenings. Twice a year we've got the opportunity to meet face to face with our teachers. The people who spend perhaps more waking time with our children than we do. It's vital that we take part and we can take advantage of those opportunities. Especially those information orientation things where we need to make important choices and there's a lot of change afoot. And we need to be able to be informed so we're not asking the questions later. Positive PR. And this is under the parent part because there's two, two attitudes prevalent in Jewish communities around the world. There are parents that rally around their school and create almost like an invisible force field. They won't allow anyone to touch their school, to say negative about the school. But yes, they're very involved, and they're involved in school improvement, and they're partnered with the school. Nothing is swept under the carpet. But the way that they talk about the school, the Shabbos table talk, the community talk, the positive energy, and they're the greatest PR for the school. And it's vital that we adopt that attitude, not us to show them all the same time. And we have to realize that there's room and a lot of opportunity for us to become active partners. I know that in the future, in the, next, in the coming months, we're going to talk about the Parents and Friends Association and reawakening a real Parents and Friends voice so that we can have a more active partnership together with the parents. Just going to talk a little bit about recruitment and retention. I've actually interviewed, I think, 12 or 14 new families in the last three months together with Michelle Blackman. And it's from, from all different, from a full range of the community. Um, some are not in Jewish day schools, some in Jewish day schools. We've had numerous students start at the end of term three, even more in term four, and we've got quite a large number beginning in the start of next year. So that's quite an exciting, um, quite an exciting development. Now I'm going to talk about the, and I'm going to stop for questions after each section here the new structures that we're implementing in our primary school. And I'm going to explain this in greater detail as well. If you notice at the top, we have two 